Gosh, they say never work with, what is it? Never work with children, never work with animals, and never work with live software yeah. demonstrations. But, right, we're going to take a quick uh, trip to first uh, to the Zagros, and then go on to uh, look at the Zechstein of Northeast England. Um, because we have a format where we're going to do all this in 15 minutes, obviously this is quite challenging, uh, just to emphasise that, I mean, we've been, I think we've had 25 different um, field campaigns in the Zagros. We've got well over 30,000 georeference photos. Um, so we can only really, give, and a lot, a lot of other data as well, we can only really give you a tiny snapshot. Um, so you, you have to bear in mind that, um, well, w when you... Some things, not. Uh, you have to bear in mind that when um, you, you're sitting here passively looking at it, but really, for best effect, you should, each of you, you should be sitting um, driving the tour at your own pace, going to your own things and interacting with the information that's on screen and available for you uh, to, 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 to look at rather than uh, in this format, which is uh, obviously a little bit closer to a tour than, um, than an interactive one-on-one -on -one session. Right, let's see. So here we are. Um, uh, we're going to start with the... If I can just do that. We're going to start with the global scale, okay? And first we're going to zoom in and have a look at the Zagros here, this mountain belt down here at the north part of uh, the Arabian platform, the Arabian uh, shield. And then we're going to go up to uh, look at the Zechstein Basin up <coughs> in um, northwest Europe. Okay, so the Arabian, uh, the, the Arabian plate um, uh, uh, was moving northwards, closing the Tethian Ocean here. You can see that the, the, the blue-red line here is the Tethian suture. Um, and uh, uh, with, with the closure of Tethys that uh, also led to the Himalayan orogeny here coming down through uh, Pakistan salt ranges, through Afghanistan into the, through the Makran. There's the, uh, there's the Zagros. Um, and you can just see the, the, the these are GPS, geodetic GPS uh, derived motion uh, with the, the northward, representing the northward movement of the Zagros plate. Let's put some um, other data on there, John. So now we can superimpose the seismic data on here. So the seismological data, earthquake data. If we keep on zooming in a bit, so the orange in particular are the most shallow earthquakes through to uh, darker colors with depth. Um, okay, let's keep on zooming in. We can superimpose our uh, regional tectonic um, elements here, the most prominent of which is the Tethian suture here. But you also see a number of north-south or nearly north-south uh, large fault zones here. These are uh, oblique right lateral um, zones that are accommodating this oblique deformation. The northward move movement of the Arabian plate here is oblique to our Tethian trend, the, the, um, the, the Arabian plate margin, uh, so that le leading to right lateral transpression. Fantastic. And these big fault zones, there's a, uh, quite a coincidence. I mean, there's a lot of seismicity throughout the Zagros Plateau, but there's uh, often quite a high incidence of complicated seismological signals associated with these north-south accommodation zones. Okay, <coughs> so first of all, let's go um, in, a, in a bit more detail. Okay, could we... Um, so we're going to zoom in to the Iranian part of the Zagros. This is our um, uh, geological mapping draped, superimposed over its vector-based mapping of, for the whole of the Zagros, draped over the Zagros, in this case, the, um, uh, the, the, the Iranian sector. We're going to just zoom in to the Namak anticline, absolutely fantastic example of these uh, of a, a four-way closing anticline, one of these ones that makes the Zagros so uh, important economically, okay, uh, in terms of uh, petroleum exploration production. So just can you keep on zooming in a little bit, John? Here uh, in the uh, orange and yellow colours, these are the Cenozoic units, the youngest units here, down to... Um, to, to the Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene in the, uh, in the synclines around, uh, flanking all the anticlines there. And you can see, or you will see as we zoom in a little bit more, um, thanks, that uh, we're looking inside through the greens of the Cretaceous, the blues of the, uh, of the Jurassic, right down to the Paleozoic. And we're getting Paleozoic uh, exposed in the core of this anticline because of the presence of this large, um, uh, this large hormus salt, this, pre, uh, this Cambrian salt 
diaphragm. Could you take the geology off now, Jim? Okay, so if you just look at the topography, there's a very close association. That's what makes the Zagros so fantastic. If you ever get the chance to go as a geologist, you really should. It's unbelievable. Okay, there's a very close correlation between what you see in the topography and the underlying, well, the overlying ge geology, really. It's right in your face. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, there's the, um, there's the, the, um, uh, the uh, salt, the evaporite. Uh, diaper. Can we just have a quick look at a photograph of that, John? This is what it looks like. Uh, many thanks to Pete Llewellyn um, via Mark Allen, who provided this aerial shot. Again, not sure you can see that uh, particularly well, but th th this is salt flowing down the hillside in the core of this anticline. Absolutely spectacular. And what we can see in the Iranian sector is that the salt um, plays a uh, significant role in controlling the development of the anticlines, or at least many people believe it does. Okay. So let's um, have a quick look at some other types of data. These are one of our uh, balanced cross sections running northeast to southwest. Here's the high Zagros, okay, big anticlines, th major thrusts coming to surface, bringing the, um, bringing the Paleozoics to surface in the high Zagros. But the rest of the Zagros, as you move through the, the, the Zagros belt, further towards the foreland, it's really fold dominated. And although you see minor thrusts at surface, what you really, really see are spectacular fold structures that form these great four-way closing traps. Okay? All right, where should we go next, John? Should we, we go? Uh, so we, we'll, we'll move along strike um, and travel out a little bit, and then we're gonna go northwest up through Iran towards um, the Iraqi border, over the Iraqi border, right up into the northern part of the Zagros. Here we can see, we're just gonna lose the Turkish border. Okay, we're right in the northern um, part of Iraq, the northeast part of Iraq, fairly close to the Turkish border. A big anticline called Gara, it's the type section for the Gara, for Chiagara formation, for those of you that know. And we're going to, in a minute, we're gonna zoom in and have a look uh, at viewpoint from uh, the, uh, down into the eroded core of the anticline. But once again, we're seeing um, the Cenozoic units on the edge. Green is Cretaceous, massive carapace forming, cliff forming Cretaceous of the Acrobecne. Um, and then the uh, blue colors uh, are the Jurassic, uh, more reservoir units in the Jurassic, as you'll see, through to the purple of the, um, uh, of the, the Triassic in another reservoir mm -hmm. unit, the Kurachina. Let's um, focus in. John, could you just take off the, the geology? Let's just mm -hmm. remind ourselves what the topography looks like and start to zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, that's great. Move around a bit just so we, so we get a bit of perspective. Okay, fantastic. We're, we're looking at 1,000 metres of, um, of cliff section through multiple stacked reservoirs here. Okay, someone said to me, I think John, John Furman said to me earlier, the great thing about the Zagros is that your reservoir analogues are right next door. Okay, people are producing from these reservoir units just a very few kilometers away. Okay, uh, so it's really a, a great place to look at outcrop geology with direct economic uh, importance. Let's um, zoom in. This is, um, you can see the road winding up the hillside here. This is one of Saddam Hussein's former palaces, or at least it was, it was bombed and, and removed. Um, so we're right standing where Saddam has sat imperially and looked out over, over um, the Kurdish countryside of the, the people that he subjugated. Okay, this is the inside of the, uh, the anticline. Again, the, the, the white line here is the, the base of our Cretaceous reservoir unit. This is the base of the main, one of the main Jurassic reservoir units, the, the Sicanian. Um, and then this is the base of the Triassic. And in between each of these um, thick, uh, fractured carbonate reservoir units, we've got um, thinner shale-dominated units that, that uh, seal well. So we've got multiple stack pay, uh, each of which fairly well sealed, mostly by shale, but sometimes with a bit of evaporite too. Okay, where should we go to next? Okay, let's have a look, another cross-section through again, south-north oriented. We're looking, the, we're looking through that eroded core, and this is our interpretation of it. We think the whole lot is... Um, is supported by a um, reasonably large thrust that just comes to surface through a true shear, those of you that, um, uh, that know the region, okay? But the anticline itself, there are thrusts that, uh, that you'll see at surface, but, but they're generally fairly shallow. They're, they're re relatively isolated detachments. So what we can see uh, typically in a lot of these eroded anticlines is the importance of the mechanical stratigraphy uh, in influencing the, um, the fold structure and influencing the, the fold geometry and its uh, the fold development. 
Can we move along strike? Let's go that down. We're going to zoom in a little bit and go right down into the core of the anticline. Okay, so we're now down here and, and uh, looking at <coughs> the, 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 um, these flanks, that, which are the Cretaceous margins. Um, okay, uh, these are the um, acrobecme units, fantastic, massive fractured carbonates. You can see these fracture systems cutting down through, uh, through the unit. And some of them are, uh, well, most of them are extremely well vertically connected, so we get very high um, uh, significant flow rates here. Although, uh, in, as you look in more detail, we've spent a lot of time looking at these um, fracture systems um, from an economic point of view. Uh, when you look in more detail, there's quite a strong fracture stratigraphy in the reservoir units as well. We can look at an example of that, okay? So here we've got our outcrop data superimposed <coughs> with interpretation and uh, in which we're, cut, we're using the different colours to I illustrate um, the likelihood of different units retarding fracture propagation. So how many fractures stop at, at particular boundaries and how many are, are uh, restricted um, and are, are bed confined. Okay, let's um, keep on going, John. Let's move on to... Um, to uh, we're going to move back bit southeastwards down uh, in the general direction of Iran, but now still well within the Kurdistan region of Iraq. We're going to go to Ranya, okay? Another big eroded out um, anticline here. Town of Ranya is just off to the southeast here. So we're looking more or less north or a bit west and north. Um, where should we go to first, John, do you think? So okay. Same colours again. Here's the Cretaceous. And we're going to this time look at um, areas where we do see thrusts at surface. Quite often with the Jurassic units in country, we do see um, thrusts uh, uh, imbricating the, our Jurassic reservoir units, particularly near the cores of anticlines. So this is a nice example. We're standing on the Barsarine, um, the Barsarine, a thin carbonate that works as, a, a, as an additional reservoir. This is the, our base, so, so, sorry, our top Sacanian, um, the, the blue here. Um, and um, we're looking at its repetition here, okay? There, there's our Sicanian unit here. The blacks are thrust coming through here. There's the same Sicanian unit o over here, okay? And down below that, we're getting down into the, the uh, older parts of the Jurassic. Right. Let's go and st we're going to now st go up and stand on that uh, thrust zone. It's not a huge thrust, but it's important. In, um, it would be important if it, it, you had this in the reservoir, of course. See a lot of damage in the hanging wall zone, a lot of fracturing. We're right next to the thrust here. Uh, it's very, uh, very broken, very high fracture counts in the immediate hanging wall uh, of these thrusts and into the foot wall. We can trace this along. Again, there's, our, there's one of our units that um, we see the same unit imbricated across this, and then the whole thing uh, <coughs> comes over uh, the core of the anticlines down here in the valley. Okay? So next up, we're going to jump over the hillside uh, to, to our last part of um, uh, our last main area, um, which is at McCook. Again, just uh, still in Kurdistan region. Again, here's our base of canyon. Okay, beautiful fractured reservoirs. Um, we're going to zoom in and have a closer look at these fractures. Okay, there's the Cretaceous section, lovely hillside. Right, now we're going to zoom in. There's a split screen here on the right-hand side. We've got our um, interpreted fracture systems. We use um, a computer-based uh, auto-picked or semi-auto-picked system to pick out these. And we typically, um, this is for us one of the real values in the outcrop geology, the virtual <coughs> outcrop geology that John introduced, and that's looking at fracture systems. This is where the money is for us, okay? It's very time-consuming to measure fracture data um, uh, uh, um, quantitatively. We would typically derive systems with tens of thousands, well, yeah, thousands and to tens of thousands of fractures. Uh, within a single virt uh, virtual outcrop, and we would use that data. We can derive a lot of geometrical data that we can use to derive real fracture properties very, to give us very robust um, DFN models that go into reservoir modeling, uh, for example, these full field cellularized models. Okay, so for us, this is the real value from our point of view as structural geologists, one of the main selling points for us for virtual outcrop data. So just to finish off, um, we're going to focus in on um, one aspect of these which puzzled us a lot um, because we had a lot of difficulty in relating 
what we saw stratigraphically at the, in the surface to our subsurface reservoirs, or the subsurface reservoirs from our climates, obviously. Um, and that was because we couldn't get thicknesses to, to, to map up. And what we actually see is that uh, when we match the, our uh, outcrop logs with uh, subsurface data, there's a lot missing in the outcrop. Okay? Can you show us the, um, John, can you just look back very quickly and show us the photograph? Oh, uh, uh, the, okay, this is a typical field photo where we see blocks of, um, blocks of carbonate. We see a very strong carbonate fracture. And the reason for that is the amount of evaporite dissolution that's taken place. Okay? And um, so here we've got uh, evaporate dissolution processes that are occurring as the rocks are exhumed. They're occurring in the last few hundred metres close to the surface from meteoric um, evaporite dissolution processes. So we struggled to understand this a lot, but luckily we found a very good analog a lot closer to home. Now the problem is it's closer to home, so logistically easier, but it's significantly more dangerous to spend time in uh, Sunderland than it is to spend time out in this part of the world. You think I'm joking, but it's absolutely true. Uh, so we go to... Uh, look, I've, never, I've been many times in the Zagros and never had any problem. We have guys in Sunderland who are standing in the outcrop, next thing fridge has come over, standing the face of the outcrop, a fridge has come over the outcrop and landed by the side. <laughs> Sunderland is a dangerous place. Okay. <laughs> so, in the next, yeah, so in the next session, we're going to focus on the uh, Zestine Basin. Yeah.